and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm making soap cupcakes. I um, had a little bit of soap batter left over from a project and I had these really cute little silicone muffin cups that I got on Amazon. They're flexible and reusable um, and I'll have them in the link below. But uh, I decided to pour some cupcake bottoms and make a soap frosting to go on top, which I will be sharing the soap frosting recipe I'm using today in the description box below. Um, for my frosting tip, I just used this. It's a Wilton, uh, I can't read. I don't have my reading glasses on. One, I don't know, but there it is. It's just a big, um, a big round one. <laughs> That's what it is. That's the soap frosting tip I used. Uh, and for my color, I did um, plain or a little titanium dioxide and an orange swirl, and I'll talk about why it's orange. Um, I used electric orange for the um, part of the orange swirl, and this is really pretty orange color. And the reason I chose that is because the fragrance, um, the base of this, the cupcakes are scented with citrus mist from Essential Depot, which is a wonderful fragrance, but then I had to make the frosting and I wanted to stick with the citrus theme, and so I'm using Satsuma Orange from Nurture Soap, and this is one of my favorite um, citrus scents. It's so good and it's strong and it sticks around after the cure time. I really love this scent. So that is what I have going on today. Let's come along and make some really juicy orange cream cupcakes, soap cupcakes. So I've got this atomic orange here from Nurture Soap that I'm gonna put into my base of the cupcakes. So they'll have, I'm not gonna use a ton, but just a nice, you know, pretty color since these orange and cream cupcakes I want to go with the whole theme so I'm going to go ahead and blend in that um, right in here and it already has the fragrance in here so there we go oh that's pretty all right and we're going to get our aloe vera lye solution mixed in and then we'll get these poured and get on to making our cupcake frosting Get our little cupcakes poured. I don't know how far we'll get. I have more um, cupcake liners ready if I need them. Let me get these scooted in case I need more. I can fit them on here. Sorry, I forgot to get the camera on here. I'm doing the heat transfer method for my frosting. So I have my hard oils in here and I poured my hot lye water over the top here. And that's how I'm proceeding. And we'll wait till this melts and we'll add our um, my olive oil in here, the liquid oils. And we'll get to whipping this up for frosting. And I've got, sorry, <laughs> had my gloves off when I was cleaning up and doing dishes. Um, so I have, this is um, all my oils. The lye is in here. The lye does have tussa silk fibers, sodium lactate, and now I'm adding my fragrance. It's uh, Satsuma Orange, which is so wonderful. It is literally one of my very favorite um, citrus fragrances from Nurture Soap that in there and now I have some buttermilk powder that I'm going to add in here because this is a yummy foodie um, recipe I'll just add a little and that'll make the lathered really good and stuff so I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and get my stick blender in here get that buzzed in real quick And since this is for frosting, we're gonna wait for a nice, um, you know, thick trace, and then we'll have to wait and let it firm up even more. But I am actually gonna pour off a little, and I'm gonna split it and do some orange and some white. So, 
definitely have emulsification, so let's pour off here for a little orange stripe on our frosting. There we go. I'm going to put just a squeeze of titanium dioxide in the big one here to brighten it up. And then I have electric orange. Again, I'll be just putting a little of that in here. There we go. Let's get this blended up. All right, now we just need to wait for these to firm up. I'm just gonna come in every, you know, three, five minutes or so and stir them and we'll come back when they're a nice piping consistency. So it's been about, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes and I think we've got a good consistency going to move forward. It's a little bit soft, but I'm gonna move forward with this. Um, hopefully, hopefully this is gonna work out. And I do have some just pearl sugar sprinkles for the top and some bio glitter that I might sprinkle over the top of these when it's all said and done. So let me get this down. This is press and seal wrap and I'm gonna line my frostings in here and then put it in and I just have uh, just a simple large round tip. I wanna do like half and half. Maybe a little more of the white, but put some on that side, and some on this side. All right. That is still really loose. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute because it's pretty wobbly right now and I don't wanna jump the gun here too much. I'm gonna get my first little layer on and if I need to wait a little bit more, um, then I'll do that. But I just wanna get a nice dollop down in the center of each of these and then we can uh, go around after that. Oops. There we go. And it seems to be holding a peak so I'm going to go ahead and try swirling around here and see One of the nice things about uh, making soap frosting that takes a while to set up is I've got plenty of time to do the dishes and get my soap studio all cleaned up while I'm waiting for it to firm up, so that's kind of nice. All right, so here are my flowers that I made from my leftover soap frosting. 
and oh, they smell juicy and wonderful. And they're so pretty. And I love these, they're just the perfect little palm size. But sometimes um, when it's messy in here, I get a little rough edge around it. And so what I do is I take a clean, damp cloth when I first get it out of the mold and I just run it around the edge and it smooths out any of those like really rough, flaky edges. So it's just got a nice finish to it. show you so if you can see the um, it's just got like a little I don't know if you can even pick that up but that just that little roughness around the edge and you run a cloth around and it's just it's smooth so that's how I finish them up Right, and here are our wonderful little cupcakes. And I wanted to just show you one of the things I'm learning because I've only, I'm pretty new to piping. I'm not an expert by a long, long shot, but it's um, even pressure. And so I'll show you the difference. This one, I had a much more uh, smooth hand and even pressure. And this one, I squeezed a little too hard and then lightened up. So that's the difference between an even squeeze and a not even squeeze but they're still really cute and um, these smell wonderful so let's get them out of their little molds here and see how they look they unmold like a dream and there they are little orange cream cupcakes and the sugar sprinkles and the glitter on top just make them look even cuter love these let's get them all unmolded here and I will show you how I wrap these too. I have two different methods. I'll show you the uh, cupcake wrapping that I use at my farmer's market and then how I ship them. I want to show you how I wrap cupcakes for the farmers market. Um, for my online sales, I just shrink wrap these and I have a little one and a half inch label that I put on the bottom for the um, name of it and the ingredients. So if they're shrink wrapped if they're going to ship in the mail. But for my farmers markets, uh, what I do is I bought these little nine ounce plastic cups. They look like this, they're recyclable plastic. And I put a little bit of my packing shreds in the bottom. And then I'll put my little cupcake in there. And they come with these lids. And uh, these lids have a little straw hole that you can poke out for sniffing. And these are nice because the lids are domed in case you have a really high frosting top, just put less fluff in there, but they fit a cupcake perfectly and then I can just put a label on the front. So this is how I do farmers markets cupcakes as opposed to how I ship them in the mail. Because these, they would bonk around in here in the mail, but um, it makes a nice presentation. So there you go.